ahead and get started. Big thanks to all the members of the media on the call as well. We will take questions for Gold Knights General Manager Kelly McCrimmon before we open it up to questions and opening statement from Kelly. Uh, good afternoon uh, to the members of the media. Uh, thank you for uh, taking the time. Uh, today marks the uh, trade deadline for the 2021 season. Like everything else we've done this year, it's uh, different than what we are used to, first of all, with it being uh, April 12th. I think the other thing you see when you look around uh, the National Hockey League, there were uh, a lot of different uh, forces on the market this year. When you look at the uh, uh, pandemic and just in general terms and what it does to, you know, the economies of the different teams. Uh, you know, when you look at, um, you know, no fans in buildings, when you look at a flat cap, when you factor in uh, expansion and what type of impact that may have had on teams, not our own, obviously, but on, <clears throat> on teams around uh, the NHL. I think that all those things in some way uh, affected teams. It was a little bit of a quieter day. Uh, today with, I believe, uh, 17 trades involving uh, 26 players, which in terms of volume is a little bit less than uh, than an ordinary year. In terms of our own team, we uh, went into uh, this process with uh, uh, working with our pro scouts, uh, developing a list of uh, players around the National Hockey League that we were interested in, making sure that we had really good coverage from uh, our pro staff on those players, uh, determining what our needs were. We uh, were <clears throat> looking for a forward to uh, complement our middle six, to improve our middle six, and uh, felt that was an area of our team, if possible, that we would like to uh, like to improve. Of course, we didn't have a lot of cap space to work with, as I've said uh, different times before with, uh, with our team. We're a cap team. We're a cap team. Uh, by choice, we feel that uh, that's allowed us to put together uh, the best roster. Uh, the, uh, the the difference between this year and a year ago, I think I've talked to some of you individually about this. You know, the difference between this year and last year. Last year, we went into the season recognizing that somewhere along the way, we would have moves to make to have our lineup uh, to strengthen our lineup to a position where we we're comfortable. Uh, going into the stretch drive and, and hopefully uh, preparing for success in the playoffs this year. Uh, some of that work was done in the off season. So we went into the season uh, recognizing that unlike last year, where I believe we made five trades in season this year, there wasn't going to be uh, a lot of movement with our roster. So that was one of the things that we knew going in as the season went on, we felt that it was uh, important if possible to, uh, to add that, uh, uh, forward to improve our top nine and uh, identified uh, the player Matthias Janmark, who we acquired today. We, uh, Matthias is a cap hit of 2.25 million. Um, Chicago retained 50% of that cap hit in a transaction that then saw the player go to San Jose, who in turn uh, retained 50% of the remaining balance, which allowed uh, Janmark to come to our organization with a cap hit of $560,000. Uh, dollars, which was something that we could absorb. And that was the way that the deal was able to uh, be put together. In, uh, in Matthias Janmark, we get a player that uh, you know, really has good speed. He plays a very direct game. He's had an excellent year in Chicago in an expanded role, probably from what he had uh, in Dallas. We have real good history on the player from the bubble in Edmonton, where we watched uh, not only our own games, but of course, uh, every game uh, that was played throughout the playoffs. We, in fact, ended up playing Dallas in the conference finals. So by the time you spend that much time uh, watching a player, playing against a player like that, you feel that you have uh, a pretty good evaluation of what that guy is and what he could do for you. Uh, in turn, we had a lot of viewings on him uh, this year from our pro scouting staff in Chicago, where, as I touched on, he had a somewhat uh, different role and, you know, Talking with people that have worked with this player before, we were really comfortable that he uh, is going to be a good addition and make our team uh, a better team. With respect to uh, the season ahead, we're now down to really four weeks, a month of hockey that, uh, that is left, uh, 16 games to go, uh, as has been the case for the, the entire uh, regular season through our 40 games, the top of the uh, West Division is very uh, competitive. The positions are up for grabs all 
uh, three of the top spots. We uh, currently sit four points behind Colorado with one game in hand. Uh, I believe we're five uh, clear of Minnesota with even games played. And of course, with all games being four point games uh, in the division, uh, there's a lot of really important hockey left to play. Uh, the trade deadline marks the final opportunity for teams to, um, you know, try to try to hand your roster off uh, uh, in, in complete form uh, for the stretch drive in the playoffs. I think that uh, the players have performed well. We believe in the players. We never uh, consider taking anyone, anyone out of our mix uh, this season. That was uh, uh, pretty apparent uh, that we believe in the players that we have. And again, uh, happy to add Matthias Janmark uh, to that group here uh, today. So uh, with that, I'd open it up uh, to any questions that, uh, that people have. Thanks, Kelly. And just a reminder for media on the call, just as we've done in the past, you can raise your hand below if you have anything for Kelly today. We'll do our best to get to it. We'll start with Ed Graney, Las Vegas Review Journal. Kelly, um, you've said a couple times now that you didn't want anyone off your roster. Um, had you been able to do nothing today, would that have lessened at all your idea or belief you can win the Stanley Cup? Uh, we were prepared with the status quo, Ed. I, I think... Uh, uh, you know, one of the things that you need from your team with a move or without a move is you need uh, you need people to continue to improve. You need to improve internally. And I, and I think that's the case with this trade or without that trade. I think in, in, I think you've seen that within our team here uh, over the course of the, of the last month, I would say. So that part of it is important. It, it wasn't, uh, you know, no trade was a very, real, a very real possibility. We made a trade you know, probably two hours ahead of the deadline. So uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't out of the question that that could be, uh, could be the outcome uh, of the trade period. And if it, uh, if it was, we would have uh, forged ahead pretty comfortable with our team. We had a chance to uh, make our team better. We felt the cost was one that we could afford. And, uh, and with that, we added the player. Next question for Kelly comes from Jesse Granger, the athletic Hey, Kelly, you mentioned the speed. I mean, that kind of pops out to me. I'm wondering of the options that were available um, around the league to trade for of these forwards, uh, what made Matthias Janmark stand out to you and what made you think he was the best fit here? Well, he's got, uh, you know, he's got good experience in the league. He's got good playoff experience. He played in the Stanley Cup final. Um, very good utility to move up and down a lineup. So if you're in a situation where, uh, injuries come into play. I think he's got a lot of usefulness uh, in that type of a scenario. Um, you know, a left shot, which uh, usually teams are looking for more right shots uh, than left shots. But I like the fact that uh, that he was a left shot. And, you know, again, we had a, a, a group of players that we were interested in that we, uh, you know, were doing work on, you know, throughout the entire season as, as potential uh, candidates. And as it goes along, some of those players – uh, don't become available for the for trade. Some of those players perhaps sign contract extensions. Some of those players uh, perhaps end up in other teams. So there's a lot of things that uh, that go into the process. And you know, Janmark was a player that we held uh, in high regard. And when uh, we were uh, making our decisions this morning, felt that he was the best fit for our hockey team. Next question comes from David Shane, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, Kelly. How much did the last maybe handful of games or a couple of weeks and just the results from that influence the decision to go out and actually be proactive as a deadline? Uh, less than you think, Dave. I, I think that, you know, sports isn't an emotional business and, and there's highs and lows that uh, really tie closely to how your team's playing over a weekend, over a week, over a 10 day period. You mentioned a period of a couple of weeks. But your decisions are far more at the 35,000 foot level, far more macro in nature. You know, we, we worked hard in the off season to position our team to shape the roster the, the way that it, uh, that it is, the way that it appears. And, uh, you know, within that, there's going to be some ups and downs over the course of the season. I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't feel there's any connection uh, to what we did today. I think that we won every game for the last two weeks and we lost every game for the last two weeks. I don't think it would have been a different outcome uh, with our approach to the trade deadline. 
uh, or the results from the trade deadline. It's, uh, you know, it's far more uh, big picture than, than just a handful of games. Next question for Kelly McCrimmon comes from Justin Emerson, Las Vegas Sun. Hi, Kelly. This may or may not be related to Matias Yanmark, but I'm kind of curious as to your kind of how Cody Glass fits into your plans for the rest of the season and the postseason. Uh, you sent him to the uh, – go ahead. Well, uh, Cody was assigned to uh, to Henderson, and then I believe uh, the timing of his recall coincided with uh, Chandler Stevenson's uh, suspension. Uh, of course, Chandler has returned. Uh, Cody's been out of our lineup. We'll make a decision here this week with respect to what we think is best for Cody, and it'll be uh, development-based as it was when we uh, talked about this before. So, uh, you know, to be quite honest, uh, just the focus is – uh, been on the trade deadline and uh, and the work that goes into that. Uh, some of those decisions are decisions that we'll get to this week, Justin. Next question comes from Nick Katsunika with NHL.com. Hey, Kelly. Uh, I'm struck by how the competition really doesn't change amid the pandemic. I mean, I think the top nine teams are separated by four points. Um, almost every one of those teams made an addition before the deadline. Could you just speak to that? And you were one of the teams that was creative, like despite all the headwinds and the cap issues, you found a way to, you know, to make a trade. Yeah, it's, uh, as I said at the outset, there was different challenges this year. And, um, you know, the, the what, what a lot of fans don't realize, probably what a lot of media don't realize, and I'm not referring to our own team, is just the work that goes into this for NHL teams and for teams that did, very little today uh you know i'm certain that it wasn't because there wasn't uh, a great deal of time and effort and uh concern uh put into the process you know we you know our our objectives were pretty uh, our focus was pretty narrow uh in terms of what we were hoping to do so that likely helped us in terms of our preparation um you know we were fortunate that we had uh, you know, an, an additional uh, second round pick uh, in this year's draft, because really that's the bulk of the, this deal There's a rotation of picks uh, next year that I think, you know, in most years, most teams are capable of, uh, of doing. But, you know, the extra draft pick uh, this year, we were able to retain the New Jersey second round pick, which, you know, I think if we were drafting today would be fifth or sixth in the second round, as opposed to our own uh, second round pick. And if you've you know, been part of an NHL draft, there's a, a real different layer of players that are available early in the second round as opposed to uh, late in the second round. So, um, you know, we were really happy to be able to uh, retain that pick. And, and again, <clears throat> just to the draft with the challenges that there's been for amateur scouting staffs across the National Hockey League, uh, I expect there's going to be a lot more variability to the draft this year than there would be in an ordinary year. So with that selection uh, high in the second round, you know, we may get a player that we had, you know, between 15 and 20 on our list. And in, in an ordinary year, those picks early in the second round, you're, you're always getting a guy that you had uh, ranked in the first round this year. I think that there could be even more volatility in terms of the makeup of those lists across, across 32, uh, 32 teams. So, you know, that, well, that was what able, enabled us to make the trade. Uh, uh, Nick was the, the fact that we had uh, the extra draft choice and, and uh, that uh, was the, the large part of, uh, of the deal. Still time for a few more today with Kelly. Next question for him goes to Ben Goat, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hey, Kelly. You mentioned Matias is kind of playing in an elevated role in Chicago. I'm curious, what are your discussions like when you're projecting how a player maybe in a different role on a different team will fit into your own lineup and the role you envision for him? Well, more, it will be more similar to what he was in Dallas. So, you know, he's going to, he's going to play, you know, in our top three lines, as I, as I touched on, he's got the ability to complement good players. When you look at the, uh, uh, his usage in Dallas. When you look at his usage this year, he he's played with uh, uh, you know a variety of players, and and one of the things that we were able to uh, uh, you know find out from speaking with people that have worked with the player is is that's a real strength of his game is that he can play uh, with a lot of different players that players like to play with him that he adds uh, he complements uh, he complements a line so. 
that uh, you know versatility I, I think is going to be uh, important for us. And uh, you know over the playoffs with Dallas uh, and not just against our team, but all of their uh, you know we saw them play three playoff rounds plus a round robin, and then his play in Chicago it gives us a pretty good uh, sampling of uh, you know the the potential that we have to use him in different ways. Next question goes to Danny Webster with NHL.com. Hi, Kelly. In terms of the deal itself, how pleased were you that you were able to get a guy that can check all the boxes, special teams, fortify that top nine, while really maintaining the crux of your roster and not having to give up any uh, of your current assets on, in the roster form? Yeah, that was important to us. We weren't, uh, we weren't going to take away from our team. That was a uh, you know, decision we made uh, you know, quite some time ago. We really are comfortable with the makeup of our roster, the personnel that we have. We need those players, so we weren't uh, going to take away from that. I like the chemistry of our team. I like the leadership of our team. So it was important not to have any changes uh, there. And uh, you know, that's where you know, adding the player in a futures-type deal where we felt we had uh, the draft capital to be able to afford it, uh, you know, now you're only improving your team. You're not taking away, you're not, you know, subtracting a player, adding a player, netting out uh, positively, you're, you're only uh, improving your team. So that was uh, the hope or the thought process going into it. Last question today goes to Steve Karp, the Vegas Hockey Hotline. Hello, Kelly. Um, just looking ahead to the postseason, where does Peyton Krebs maybe fit into the plan would he be enough along in his development that you would consider putting him in the lineup in a postseason game? Well, it's too early to answer the question. Uh, a couple things we need to make the postseason, which we're certainly hopeful that we will. Uh, Peyton's situation, he is uh, uh, in a hub in Regina or the Eastern Division of the Western Hockey League. So there's seven teams that are playing. Uh, in a hub in Regina. Peyton, uh, I believe, is the top scorer in that hub. He's been uh, arguably the best player uh, there from the reports that I've heard from people watching the games. Uh, I believe they finish on April 28th. Don't, uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's April 28th that that uh, hub uh, winds up. Um, I've heard different uh, opinions on whether there'll be a real short playoff or if it'll just conclude as the, each team there is playing 24 games. So it may, it may wind up on April 28th. At that time, we would bring uh, Peyton back to Vegas and put him in Henderson where he was playing prior to going to Winnipeg. And I think from there, you, you then get a pretty good feel, uh, Steve, to just where he's at. And before he left to go to Winnipeg, uh, I felt he was a really important player on, uh, on HSK. Uh, really liked his game. Coaches were extremely happy with his play there. So, you know, as he's continued to develop over the year and again uh, gets back on his feet in pro hockey with, uh, with Henderson, uh, it's, a, it's completely uh, a possibility that he could be, uh, you know, uh, a factor for our team uh, in the playoffs, Steve. Next question for Kelly comes from Ken Bolke, Vegas. Hey, Kelly, there was a – few discussions about possibly you having guys that could potentially go on long-term IR. I just wanted to know if you had an update on the injuries that you have. And then if that was even an option, is that something that was considered that somebody could have gone to LTIR? Uh, we had some injuries in yesterday's game. Uh, both uh, Keegan Colasar and Ryan Reeves left the game. Reeves is going to be a little bit longer term uh, than Colasar were, um, you know, literally getting through the trade deadline and then, uh, uh, having those discussions in terms of what makes the most sense here moving, uh, moving forward uh, with both players. Take one final question with Kelly McCrimmon. That comes from Jesse Granger, The Athletic. Hey, Kelly, I know he's not uh, the focal point of this trade, but I'm just wondering uh, what you're getting in Nick DeSimone and if he's excited to join the franchise. Nick is a player that came to us in the deal that we are going to uh, reassign uh, back to his team uh, in San Jose with the Barracuda. That's where he had played. And uh, it was, it was uh, as, uh, as you know, it was part of the discussion, part of the uh, deal that we made uh, with San Jose. So we acquired the player, but based on 
uh, the fact that we are comfortable with our defense and Henderson based on the fact he's already playing uh, with the Barracuda, we reassigned him back to uh, that organization. So it's a contract that's uh, attributable to our team on our books, but he'll play for the Barracuda in the American Hockey League. With that, we'll conclude today's media availability with Kelly McCrimmon. Kelly, thanks for your time. Thank you. Big thanks to all the members of the media as well. We'll send out full recordings shortly. Thanks, everyone.